lot of my friends, a lot of my family, they are all saying the same thing. Please, please, please get away from him. So maybe get a divorce. It's over. I sort of have been there where I'm like in agreement and yet still here I still am. You have experienced a fraction yeah. of what Will and Jada are experiencing with people believing that you should be apart, but choosing to still try together. Mm. What does it feel like? Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, people's thoughts and ideas are irrelevant to any one situation. So like the millions of thoughts on Will and Jada are irrelevant. It's up to what they want to do. It's up to you. And if, whether you support me or don't support me, it really is irrelevant. It has no bearing on my existence. It doesn't impact you literally at all. Not, not, not whatsoever. Lovers and friends. Lovers and friends. I'm gonna take you on a trip, baby. I don't pretend. I say, lovers and friends. Uh, I'm gonna hold you down, down to the end. I say. Hi, lovers and friends. Welcome to the podcast. My name is Sham Boudram. I'm a public facing sex and relationship expert who approaches my work from a sexology, psychology, and journalism perspective. I have been talking about sex and relationships for 15 years. And I've probably been weaving in content about the Smiths slash Jada Pinkett Smiths um, for half that time. So even though it feels like everyone's trying to cash in right now, um, it almost feel would have felt weird if I didn't reflect on their relationship in this time of hyper attention because of the years that I have spent talking about this couple or reflecting on them. In some cases, putting them up on a pedestal. In other cases, looking at them with a critical eye. And this episode is kind of a mix of both. Um, now, originally, I didn't have an episode slated that was going to be about her book. One, because if you're an audio listener, I apologize, this is a late episode, but her book dropped the day after my audio is supposed to come out. And two, I actually didn't know what the fuck was going on. Like I, like everybody else, was watching this media circus storm happen and feeling very confused. Now, I totally get the Smith, Jada Pinkett Smith, exhaustion that has been going on of late because it is very tiring to be triggered. It is not fun to feel negatively. And if we're honest, since 2020, which is three years now, whenever this couple is in the news, it's usually for very big, very negative reasons, very polarizing reasons. And so when we see their name now, I think that we have this immediate fight or flight of like, get it away from me. Like, I don't want to go back into that 2020 Facebook debate that I was in before. So I understand the exhaustion of it. But again, for people who have been following their relationship and those who are fans of relationships, period, that negative reaction that everybody is getting is also something worth examining. So I have been drawn to the drama. I have been drawn to the drainage of this couple, but I haven't really got why. Like, why are we doing this? What are you actually trying to say? And it's so interesting for all of the oversharing that they do about their relationship. I still don't really quite, did not really quite get it. Like you talk a lot, but I don't actually know what you're saying. So I had come to a conclusion a couple of days ago that at this point it has to be that Jada is purposefully sacrificing herself in order to get all the negative attention on her so the rest of her family can return to a life of normalcy because they can pin it all on an evil villain witch. Because to be quite honest, you know, the way that the media has been painting her and the clips that have been chosen from the interviews that she have that she has done has really fell in line with that narrative of a narcissistic. And I'll talk about that term a little bit later. But as a person who's just out for self and harming others, either purposefully or without any acknowledgement, which is pretty much the exact same thing. So I don't really want to feel that way. I don't want to feel that way about you, dear viewer, dear listener watching. I do not want to believe that you are a bad, unlovable, harmful, or just negligent person. And I definitely don't want to feel that way about somebody who I have looked up to and someone's perspective that I have put a lot of weight behind. So I've definitely been, again, consuming a lot of content. So I was watching Jay Shetty's interview with Jada, trying to figure out specifically what the fuck is going on between you and Will. Like, what are you actually saying? And as she is talking 
and saying certain things about their separation, about their passion for each other, about their on and off nature, about the entanglement, something occurs to me. This is sounding pretty familiar. And then she says something that makes me go, (sighs) Jada says, a lot of people have been saying, why don't the two of you just get divorced? Or in social media land, people have been begging the two of you to get divorced. And she replied, trust me, we've been trying. We have tried so hard in so many different ways to get away from each other, but yet here we are. And that is something we have to examine. And I thought to myself, God damn, well, if this ain't my mom and dad, then I don't know what is. My parents have been getting divorced since I was 10 years old. I'm now 38. So they've been married for 35 years. And in that time, my mom moved away to Spain. She got her own apartment. They've lived in the same house, but on different floors for like a year at a time, not been together. It has become a running joke a deep embarrassment, a place of great confusion in my family, the dynamic of my parents um, because of this on and off, but yet still continuously together nature. They've never officially gotten divorced before, um, but they have definitely called their relationship a couple who is divorcing and they have definitely acted as divorced people would and been separated. So And also my parents got married very young at 23 years old. And also my parents have an extremely passionate relationship. There was just tons of parallels. And then I realized in listening to Jada that a way for me to understand my parents' relationship more was to do what I have been avoiding doing, especially, and I'll talk about this with them because spoiler alert, I invited my parents on and they graciously said yes to exploring this topic with me and perhaps giving people an insight, not to Jada and Will's relationship per se, But this dynamic, and my mom explained this dynamic very beautifully, in that most romantic relationships exist on a binary of either we work well together and we're together, or we don't work well together and we're apart. But what about couples who don't always work well together, but choose to stay together in the long run? Like, what does that look like? What does that gray space look like? So I thought that it would be a good opportunity to explore a couple like that to hopefully give more empathy to everybody, but also to give more clarity to me. Um, This last time that my parents went through a separation, it was extremely final for many reasons and ways. And they told everybody, you know, swore that this was going to be the last time. And yet you're going to speak to them today. um, And that's not the case. They're, They're back to being married, back to sharing a bed sentence that I thought I would never say. And um, yeah, I never actually asked them this last time around, like why? It just kind of felt like, okay, here we go again. When they said that they were back reunited, I was like, all right, whatever. Uh, And that's not right. And so I wanted to right that wrong today by just, you know, becoming a little bit more curious and open to their truth. And also to the reality that my parents are very much still couples goals. Because here's the kicker. I think a large reason why I was attracted to the Will and Jada storyline is because I thought it represented what my parents were not. A couple who was fully committed, a couple who was in full partnership with each other, a couple who wasn't looking for outs or taking any opportunity to run when it got uncomfortable. But lo and behold, this entire time, I've just been idolizing a couple who truly is exactly like my parents. So yeah. It was interesting to me, and I hope that this conversation with my mom and dad is interesting to you. So I'd love to invite them on, and furthermore, to thank them for opening themselves up to this. And I also want to put the disclaimer out there. I grew up in an incredibly loving home with two young and very cool and vibrant parents who loved the hell out of each other and made sure that we knew it. And loved the hell out of each other is probably an accurate descriptor because, and as my dad will probably honestly tell you, their relationship was equal parts passionate as it was volatile. And in the end, was there challenges with that growing up in that household? Yes, but the benefit of that far outweighed that. Um, And hopefully, again, I can reflect on this more with them. 
So let's, let's bring them in. Pardon the interruption, but it's time for an ad break. Let's talk about something joyful, eating. It is one of the big joys of life, but can also be a huge hassle. What are you gonna eat? How much time do you have to cook? What groceries do you even have right now? Now this week, I want you to let me simplify this for you and let me get you 50% off your grocery bill with HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. I'm talking about skipping trips to the grocery store and counting on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that is why it is America's number one meal kit. Now I've been using HelloFresh since 2020 and no matter what has gone on in the world, I've been able to rely on HelloFresh to feed my family and to keep dinner time exciting and engaging and give us opportunities to connect. That's what it's really about. Now, by now you probably know that HelloFresh takes the hassle out of mealtime, but did you know it can also save you that money? HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. That means less stress in your day and more money back in your pocket. And if you wanna save even more just for giving it a try, go to hellofresh.com slash 50 lovers and use code 50 lovers for 50% off plus free shipping. Let me make this clear for you, okay? This is like someone saying, hey, we're gonna grocery shop for you, give you pre-proportioned individually bagged ingredients so you have zero food waste in the end. We're gonna provide you with a pictured step-by-step -step recipe card. Oh, and also we're gonna take 50% off the box price just because we are that confident that if you try this once, you're gonna wanna come back for more. So that's what you get when you go to hellofresh.com slash 50 lovers and you put 50 lovers in the promo code section. Thank you for saying yes to doing this. I know it's been a very long day for you. And also when I told Jared about this and I was like, oh my gosh, I'd love to talk to my parents and get their reflections. I think there could be a lot of parallels. Jared was like, your parents are not gonna do this. And so I was like, oh, I don't know, I'll just ask. Um, so why did you? No, well, we're, we're, at, we're actually knew what Jared's gonna say and we're doing it despite Jared. <laughs> like you don't know us. But in our hearts, we don't want to do it, but we just do not. Well, that's pure good. Spite. Whatever got you here, I'm very grateful. Yeah, like <laughs> F you, Jared. Yeah. Um, okay. Are you familiar with the acronym TLDR? It means no. too long, don't read. So you've been married for, here's my best guess, 36 years? 40. Four, how old is your sister? 40. <laughs> so add 40? one year. So Damn. 41 years. 41 Damn. years. Yeah. You've yeah. married for 41 yeah. <laughs> years. If you were to give the too yeah. long, don't yes. read, meaning, okay, you're not gonna watch this whole episode. Here's the gist of our marriage. What would that be? Um, very... Um, tempestuous. Tempe I was gonna say tumultuous, right? Very combative and yet a very passionate, actually. It's a very passionate um, marriage that we have. That's because passionately on every aspect of when it. When we love, we go all out. When we fight, we go, go all, all out. out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how, okay, how about, how about this one, balls to the wall? Yeah, I don't know, I don't have balls. I don't know what that would feel like. Is that pleasurable? Is that painful? Know, Is that a mix right? of both? But, yeah. <laughs> but very passionate. That's the only yeah. way that I could describe us because yeah. we are on both ends of the spectrum to the extreme. Mom, yeah. you said something very poignant that I want you to just say again, because yesterday we were chatting, you talked about the binary that most marriages exist on, where you are you do well together, so you stay together, or you don't do well together, so you split up. Um, and where are you guys on that binary? Well, right now, we're, we have actually passed through that, and so we are actually at the point of right now working it out um i would say still that we are um, still working towards the ultimate goal and that is just to stay together and be together because i think at the end when we after 41 years we've come to the conclusion that we might not get along so famously together um in the past so like i said we're working on it but um but we also can't stay apart from each other and that has that has what has kept us together. And I think one of the things we both realize is, a, is like a, as you get older, you, you say to yourself, who do I want to find my corpse? And I can't think of anyone else I'd like to find my corpse other than Olivia. Okay, well, <laughs> if we don't do the TLDR and we have time, can you 
tell me yeah. about your relationship from beginning to now. You can just include whatever you think is important to share. I think that when I think back, like if we want to go back to the very beginning, we met when we were 22 years old. Um, from the very beginning, we were almost instantly passionate towards each other, sort of like we met each other, we always saw each other, um, we introduced ourselves to each other. And it was sort of right away, there was just this connection and this um, sense that, you know what, this is the person I want to be with. Well, to clarify too, because I always ran with the story that you guys got engaged after two weeks of knowing each other. But that wasn't the time the ring was exchanged. But pretty much. Pretty much. That's pretty much. That would probably be the very quick answer because we actually met on August the 6th in 1981. And October 17th, we got engaged. We got me in the ring and we were officially engaged. So two months, two weeks after he asked me, two months later, we were engaged. Yeah. Does that give yeah. you more clarity? Yes. Right? Well, just... <laughs> And it doesn't make you sound desperate at all. <laughs> How are you? What about you? <laughs> Did you guys go through a honeymoon phase where everything was flowers and wonderful? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. We were, the, we were the, way you, the way you see us right now is the way we were. The way we were. Except we had a lot more energy to do both. Right. Yeah. So again, I, yeah. go, I am going to bring it back to that passionate because when we were together, we were just locked um, again, even when we first met, we didn't like to be without each other, but there are times when we were together that we were very combative. Um, and there were people who said that, I don't think the two of you should be together and or getting married. And then, um, I think the priest said that, well, the priest said that just yeah. because you are not Catholic, okay. that's all. Okay. Um, so that was, his... maybe he saw something, <laughs> but yeah, we were, um, like I said, at the end of the day, we're always one end of the spectrum. So but we kept bring kept coming back together again. Yeah. So it's I, I think one of those I think things. the moment you knew I was a keeper, um, I was driving her car and she was very low on gas. So I suddenly put gas in her car. I opened my wallet and she saw money in it. Yeah, no, but yeah. yeah but you guys were that. both making yeah. the same amount of money. You were <laughs> at the same place in life. You were more or less the same age. We were exactly, no, we're, we're, we were both the same. We yeah. were students, no. um, both making the, we were at the same No, spot. No, we were not in the same spot. You were, you were from the English background where you spend every dime you have. I'm from the cheap Indian background where you save every dime you have. So Indeed. even though we made the same amount of money, one of us had more money than the other. Um, well, marginally, because yeah. at the end of the day, it's not like you were rich. Okay, no. let's get real. No, I was richer than you, though. <laughs> Twenty dollars <laughs> richer, I guess, if you want even to put it that way. Cent. Even now, look at even just having this conversation, you just can't just go with the flow. Um, but anyway, yeah. so yeah, I'm it flowing. was like I'm flowing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but then we have like long periods where we're, where we are so together, um, as you can imagine, everything happened relatively quickly. Um, within a year we were married. So we got married almost exactly a year later. Um, again, another year later, we had our first baby. Um, another year later, we had our second baby, that being you. That was you, but yeah. That was you. Yeah. yeah. Um, the third year we had a dog, a house, a career, um, you know, and we're in it and we, we were fine. Like as to coin a phrase that you and Lauren, um, I'm not sure exactly what age you were that you sort of started to say to us. You know, 80% of the time you, you, both of you just get along famously and we see the love and the passion between you, but 20%, that is very questionable. But I mean, 80% of the time we definitely did get along, but it was, like I said, both ends of the spectrum. When we were together, we were locked, but when we were apart, it was like, that's it. Yeah, but, um, but one, we're done. But one thing I think for people to understand is that anger turns you on. <laughs> So I, a lot of them, I'm thinking you're seeking that anger to. No, we have. I think that I think that between the two of us, we have a lot of underlying um, issues that we had from our own childhood. No, we're both from broken brought, homes. We're both broken from different homes. Yeah, broken. Um, in terms of the way that we, um, our upbringing, mm. um, we both brought a lot of baggage with us. You know, when we talk about 41, 42 years of being together. 
uh, we've had split ups, we have lived apart, we have um, gone to separate rooms and stayed apart from each other. Um, we have verbalized, uh, um, you know, to you, to Lauren, to other family members that we cannot be in this relationship and, anymore. And contrary to your beliefs that we only pretend to split up to get your attention, that's not true. Well, it works. Okay. <laughs> It's the only time you talk to us, so yeah, that's why we, we got more okay, attention. Let's, you know what, though? In all honesty, okay, I actually do it. feel like through the maybe last two split ups, you guys have spoken about it less. I think that there was a time, and I don't think this is a negative thing, but I don't remember at what age we started to participate in your guys' arguments. I don't mean we, we didn't participate in the argument, but we mm -hmm. participated in the mending or like the coming to an agreement of what you guys are going through. And I'd probably yeah. say Lauren more so than me, yeah. which maybe you can pin that yeah. to you know, now her confidence in being a coach. Um, and maybe you can pin that to my confidence in calling myself an expert in this space that like you guys trusted us from a really young yeah. age to be mediators um, in, do you guys, do you remember how young we started off like that? And do you remember why? Now, before we get to the answer to that question, and it's gonna be a spicy one, I want to share, proudly share, that support for today's episode comes from OneSkin. So I actually spoke about OneSkin a few months back when I first started using the product. And I didn't know then what I know now, because I've been using it for a while. This actually works. I don't know if you can flip back and look at my skin then to now. It, as soon as you put it on, you can see and feel the difference I have used countless skin products. I have got to buy this for my mom and my dad and my sister for sure so that someone else can see what I have been experiencing and feeling because it feels like a game changer. Like I'm shaking talking about this. I really, really, really like it. Okay, fangirl moment over. This is how it actually works. So one skin products are all powered by the revolutionary OS-01 peptide. And this proprietary peptide is scientifically proven to reduce age, also called senescent cells, a central source of skin aging. So their scientists have shown that it can actually reverse the biological age of skin by several years in their groundbreaking research. Their products work tirelessly to repair, rejuvenate, and erase the signs of summer damage, ensuring you step into autumn with the healthiest skin of your life. Head over to oneskin.co and explore how their products can become your skin's new savior. And for a limited time, lovers and friends listeners can get 15% off of their One Skin purchase using the code LOVERS. Again, for skin that I am really, preferentially proud to be showing up in today. I'm using OneSkin and if you wanna join me, go to oneskin.co and if you like what you see, use the code LOVERS at checkout and get yourself 15% off. I think one of the things that I kept saying to you is the, the foundation of both of us is that we ultimately love each other so much, but for whatever reason, it's coming out in, it's coming out in a negative way and in such a, such a rage and it's not healthy. It's not healthy for either one of us. It's certainly not healthy for the for both you and Lauren to be in an environment like that. But we were so consumed with our own anger and our own, um, uh, I guess, frustrations that we were going through and our own issues that it's almost like we were blinded and blinded by how it was affecting you and Lauren. So whenever it wasn't sort of like in some families, they're like, okay, you know, the children are there. So let's not, you know, let's keep everything quiet or let's, let's not show um, this side of us. And, you know, let's think about them. We didn't, we just, we showed you how much we loved each other. So we were hugged. We've kissed in front of each other, in front of you. And we've had rage in front of you. So yeah. you have seen both ends of the spectrum. And the, the other thing is to, um, we have been together so long and it is just natural curiosity going like, hey, I like live on my own for a while. You know, what would life be like be like? You know, and so as you go like, hey, why don't we try something different? You know, I might do I want to die with this person? And that's and that's a valid question once you get to a certain certain age. You're going like, okay, could there be something else? So it's just, a, I was supposed to a curiosity. And the, the other thing is, Olivia's easily antagonized and I love to antagonize people. So now you put those two things together, 
you're gonna get a very combustive situation. Yes, but you're. You weren't and always I ask, antagonizing. Why do you find joy in that? Yeah, but right? Daddy, you're not always antagonizing mom from a place of uh, like grounded decision making too. You also lost it, so it wasn't. Yeah. Of course, no, no. The thing is, it's like, oh, of course, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not like I said. No, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't done in a joke, a joking yeah. way. It Sometimes, was done. Yeah. Okay, so but it wasn't done in a joking way. It was done because you wanted to make a point, and your point had to be a point that had to be you. You couldn't see past. Well, see, that. one of the things that helped me, and it's just a recent thing, just like. I came to believe that, you know, there's a theory that we're born in this, we're, we're living in a simulation and we are all characters programmed to act a certain way. And so now I look at that and going, okay, stop trying to change people. Stop trying to impart, just accept them for who they are and just knowing that they're playing their part. That's how they were written. And so i am tend to be a little less judgmental, a little less, not a whole lot, but you know, and for me, it's like, or for, especially for Olivia, it's like, sh I was extremely judgmental towards her, you know, in terms of her, her decision making, um, the things she would do, like, you know, her chosen profession. And after a while, it tends to wear down a person. Yeah. I think that I think for the most part, though, um, I think one of the biggest issues that I have is that um, the inability to show vulnerability and to say that, you know what, this is how I this is some of the this is some of the things that I'm dealing with or this is how I actually feel like I feel, um, you know, I feel hurt or I feel um the immense um compassion towards you or um i actually like just making yourself vulnerable and what i don't i don't really want to put words in your mouth but sometimes i'm hearing what you're saying and i feel like your actions of always come back to you mean the world to me mm -hmm. you mean so much to me but yet still whenever you're talking to somebody you really want to portray that um, I'm here just simply just to help her get through her life because she really needs me because so, if it isn't for me, I don't even know where she would be. So when I hear be that alone right now, I, I, but when I hear that, mm -hmm. I'm sort of like, where is it that you're showing and telling me verbally mm -hmm. and yourself at that, that, you know what, this person, you meaning me mean the world to me. My, my children meet the world to me every, like just making yourself a little bit more vulnerable because you make a joke of everything. And sometimes that's good. There's nothing wrong with that, but there is a time and a place. And so is a time to say, you know, let me put that aside. I can see that this is not the time. So let me express myself. Let me express how I am feeling where, so this is how Brian feels. So that it's not a tied to somebody else. Okay. So, I am so, here for so you. like in that, in the white man can't jump when she asked for a glass of water and he brought her a glass of water and she said, no, I don't want, I don't want to, I want you to empathize with my thirst. I don't want, I don't want a glass of water. And my problem is I was bringing you too many glasses of water. Okay. So again, yeah. you're just, that's again, a, another transference where you're, you're putting it on to a reference, yes. which just takes the, it takes it away from you. So that's okay. not personalized. Yes. Um, and you have a hard time with that. And that's something that I would like you to work on. Mm -hmm. So that, like when I say that we're still working towards, you know, um, mending this relationship, mainly because we've been through so many different, um, so many different levels. We want to be together. We are apart from each other. We get along famously together. We don't get along famously together. But after 41 years, we're still together. So after this time, I have put up or mm. with so much in this relationship. And the one thing that I just keep coming back to is what, he's so what good. He's point, so good looking. At what, again, a joke. Okay. I, I, at what point are you going to express your feelings? Because yeah. the, other than that, Brian, it would make no sense why you were here unless you are willing and able. You do to me. But when you get in front of people, you yeah. always make a joke of okay. it. 
And here we are trying to get people to sort of understand that there's just many different relationships out there. And a lot of people have shaken their heads, even our own children, and said, why are the two of you together? Because you do fight, you have been apart mm -hmm. you so many times. What is it that keeps drawing you back to each other? I know the answer to that because I see it in your actions that you really ultimately love me and love being around me, but I can't get you to express so that. So for you, action does not speak louder than words. Actions, that's where the actions, I get it. But okay. at the same time, okay. here we are trying to have a serious conversation. We are, and we are having this very you serious just conversation. just keep bringing in joke after joke no. or references and but, have, but is it relevant? It's just taking, it, is it, it relevant? It just, see what I mean? You just can't, Say something that okay. is genuine. I love you. <laughs> but I'm putting myself out there yeah. and I'm and I understand what this podcast yeah. is all about. And yeah. it is about expressing how is it that after 41 years um, that we're still together when everyone and I'm going to say almost like everyone in our circle um, knows and has been um, privy to what goes on between us, yeah. right? So that they know that the fights that we've had, the breakups that we've had, I've moved out. You've moved to Spain. Um, I've got my own place. I moved, to I, Spain. I went to Spain, I, I've where, been a part. Where she faked an illness to get me back. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, see what I mean? Yeah. A joke again, it's right? Like, okay, see sorry, I mean? uh, sorry, so it was reality, never mind. It was reality, yeah. okay, you yeah. know? Um, but for some reason, it's, in, it's so important, important for you yeah. to actually take this moment yes. and just to make a mockery of it. No, no, what I'm, is being, that? I'm being sincere. What is that about? I'm being very sincere. So really stop and ask okay. yourself, why are you having a difficult time um, expressing yourself or getting in, getting in touch with your own feelings? What is, what is holding you back? I don't know. <laughs> Vulnerability actually makes you a lot stronger. It does. It does. So okay. if I, I would try that on if okay, I were you. Okay, I will. And stop making... As of tomorrow, um, my birthday is tomorrow, I'm going to be your vulnerable. Your birthday is. It's in a few hours now. Is the, yeah, it's gonna be, I'll be very vulnerable. This will be a new person. Do you want to tell how old you'll be? 65. There you go. I'm proud of 65. You know why? Any moron can do young. <laughs> it, takes a, it takes someone to do... Old takes a lot. And your dad, you're on no medication, never had any major illnesses. You have had a pretty crazy, wild life. You've survived, never gone to jail. I've, I've, I've had, no, I've, I've had an amazing life and I can't imagine anything else. But I think one of my thing is I've had a very easy life. I've had an easy life when I'm in charge because of the decisions I made. And so one of the things for me now is um, understanding that not everyone wants an easy life. Not everybody wants to have that stress-free existence. So keep your opinions to yourself. And my thing is, I was very um, op opinionated. That might be a surprise to you. And so for me, it's you're trying not to be, you know, just going, is that the way you want to do things? And you just realize, we'll, we all, we'll always get to the end post eventually. It just for some of us, it's going to be a lot harder and that, that people are allowed to have that choice. Who are you referring to? For yeah. some people like it harder. You say, so you're saying mom? Everyone. Everyone, yeah, people, no, no, mom, my sisters, you guys, you. Well, I think um, that's a different tangent, but going on what you said about yours and mom's arguments, I remember the second to last time that you guys had a breakup, it was over crackers, or like that was was, was communicated to me. But exactly. I know that yes. it starts at crackers, but you guys have a talent for saying some of the meanest things that I have ever heard anybody say about anybody to each other and so i think in all jest they were good they were good crackers i gotta give a shout out to the sponsor of this episode here first leaf now the reason why it's me sitting here is because first leaf is all about the wine wine baby and shan don't drink but i do you know as i stand in those confusing aisles of wine i just knew there had to be a better way and that's First Leaf. Now, after I took my quiz, First Leaf knew exactly what wines to send me. They all felt familiar. They all tasted delicious. And they kind of got me excited to try something new. 
Since I choose when my shipment comes, I'm never stressed about missing a delivery, and every selection is backed by First Leaf's 100% satisfaction guaranteed. I got a tailored Republic 2021 Rosé of Grenache. I hope I said that right. I got a 2018 and a 2020 Cabernet Sauvignon from Hallbrook Winery and Wisdom Point. I got a 2020 Pinot Noir from Santa Lucia Highlands. And finally, I got another Grenache. It's El Pico. And this one came from South Africa, so I know this one's gonna taste good. Give your palate what it really wants and what it really needs at First Leaf. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash lovers to sign up and you'll get your first six-handed curated bottles for $44.95. That is tryfirstleaf.com slash lovers. Can I ask you guys a few rapid fire questions about sure. people understanding things that can feel confusing. So with Will right. and Jada, I think what their fault flaw is that for a long time, they portrayed a very traditional um, kind of relationship. And then all at once that unraveled. Mm -hmm. And so then you're getting 20 years of history in a two year span of time. And so yeah. it can come yeah. up that it's like, how is that possible? So not from their vantage, but from your own, well, how is, is it possible that you've stayed together, but you've been apart at the exact same time? How have you been living in the same house, but not calling each other husband and wife? Well, they have a they have, they have a bigger house, so they have wings. Well, you guys have two floors. So dad, you stayed in the basement and mom, you stayed yes. upstairs. So for people who yeah. don't understand that concept, yeah. How is it possible that you can not yeah. be married, but still married and still living together, but together, but not yeah. together? Well, it's just another level. That's all it is. It's just that it's a, it's, you, you're still together. You're still like, do you want a cup of tea? Uh, I'm making lunch. Would you like some lunch? The only thing is you don't go to bed together. So you're still, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't think I'll ever get to the point where I wish your mom ill. I will always love her, I will always take care, I will always be there for her, and I will always have her best interest. So even when we're apart, I've been there for her, because I'm not, I'm not going to be um, working on, on spite on any level where she's concerned. So, so even though we're not together, we were in the sense that, okay, I'm, I'm going to look out for you. I will always be your tech support. Do you think it's weird yeah. that they went out together even though they weren't together? No, it's not because don't forget, yeah. don't forget in Hollywood too is a lot of it is for public consumption. So it is, it is make believe and there was, there were part of their brand was their image. And so that had a big part in Will being the family man, you know, Jada doing the thing. And so, yes. So what they're saying is that a lot of people will put out a public persona that has nothing to do with the private But you persona. guys did that, but it had nothing to yeah. do with your persona, or maybe it did. No, well, no, well, uh, actually, actually, we, the public persona we put out looked much worse than than the, what it was in on the inside. But I mean, like there were times, like for example, you guys came here recently, not as a couple, but you still mm -hmm. traveled together. Um, people may be confused mm -hmm. yeah. by that. So yeah. why still, why say no to being married, but say yes to doing things that married people would do? I know the thing is, and I think you, I, have, you have to understand, you can be friends. Yeah, but I think, um, I think one of the things is that there are many different relationships out there and, and how they play out is unique to each one of them. Mm -hmm. So the, the public is very quick to um, judge and say, this is a traditional relationship. This is exactly how it's supposed to be. Um, but they're not. Yeah. And we often use that term, what happens behind closed doors that we have no idea about, mm -hmm. right? So when you're looking at a couple that looks like a traditional couple, mm -hmm. but once they go home and they close those doors, we have no idea. I think society has a hard time wrapping their head, their head around that. Yeah. Um, because they have an idea of what an ideal relationship uh, I mean, should be. I mean, look at you and Jared. No one would think you're in an open relationship. Well... You know, you're posting about your love, your lovely children. And, you know, you guys are always together. You're so, you, you, you know, you look 
They are not yeah. in an open, their definition yeah. of open is not an open relationship. But then, hey, there you go. What is an open relationship, yeah. right? So yeah. again, yeah. it's it's how we want to define things and, and how the, and we the thing want to look at it. Wherever people are involved, you can't say, well, this is a standard because everyone has their own standard. Everybody has so their for, own. So for Will and Jada, it worked for them up until it didn't. And maybe for us, it will work until it doesn't. Well, speaking of the open relationship thing, because Jada and Will, they've had rumors they had an open relationship. And she said, we've never had an open relationship. And we have seen other people during our marriage. How does that make sense? I think what um, she was saying is that yeah. they weren't together at the time. The public did not know that they weren't together. Yeah. So because they, the public saw that they weren't together, yeah. they actually looked at it and said that they were in a um, like an open relationship. But what it was is that she was dating somebody else. But that's because her and Will were not husband yeah. and wife. Even though they were living together, they were not, they were not carrying on as husband and wife. So at that particular time, so the public would see that that she is um, that that she's committing adultery, right? However, they weren't together. Well, because no. you guys okay. have no. seen other people, but never while you are mm. committed to each other. But all, of course, it's all happened mm. while you were married because you've also never been divorced. I think the point that they were making mm -hmm. is that people refer to her entanglement as an affair, but she's like, it's not an affair because everybody was fully aware, like there was full communication present. But the thing is, the, the label an affair only matters to two people, you and you and your spouse. What the rest of the world thinks is irrelevant. So if you are seeing someone else and you know your spouse doesn't think it's an affair, it is not. Right. So what you are saying, was your label is irrelevant. The only label that matters is from the two people involved. Yeah. Having an on again. We're all judgy, right? We're always judging. Yeah. That's yeah. that's um, human nature. Yeah. That's what we do. Let me do a question. Having an on and off again relationship. Do you think that it has made your relationship stronger? I know that it's been a place of embarrassment for you guys. Um, to an extent, but when you look at the total of it, are you grateful for the breaks that you have had within this 40 year span? I'm gonna say yes, absolutely. I'm so happy about the breaks that we have had. Um, I'm also really happy about, you know, um, I wouldn't say I've had relationships, but what I would say is I have reached out to other people, um, males, um, partners, and just had those kind of conversations and that kind of connection so that I could actually say, you know what, this was nice and you're a beautiful person and, you know, we even share a lot of things in common, but I'm still in love with my husband and I'm still in love with that person and I would rather be around them um, and I you know, so thank you. If anything, it just shows me it, it's 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 sort of solidified exactly how I feel because I may have all those questions while we're together because I've never ventured out. But by venturing out, I've actually been able to answer those questions. So I would say for me personally, I'm glad about those breaks. And for me personally, I have no interest in a relationship with another human being. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if you've had back and forth but you've definitely engaged with people or thought about it so no no i you, you no, you would think about it it's like um you went to a psychic and what did a psychic tell you he's just too lazy to um to to pursue a relationship it's not that he doesn't want to he does but he's just too lazy to and that's exactly i think um well yeah. something i've been curious to ask you guys because the thing as you you said something very beautiful. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks about your relationship other than the two of you, but there is an element of getting social support or people agreeing that you should mm -hmm. be together that I'm sure is helpful. Yeah. And so through the years of your guys' back and forth, you lose support along the way. And I know like I went to go see dad's sister and Rita recently, and she was one of the people who was like, they need to be together. They need to cut the shit and they just need to figure it out and be together. They just, they belong together. And then I was like, oh, I don't, I don't hear that take as much as I did, you know, in previous times where, and mm -hmm. now it might be like, your parents just really need to just call this, this quits at this point because it's getting a little crazy. So yeah. 
Yeah. You experience a fraction of what they are. Well, 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 well clearly we've thought that too. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just mean in terms of an empathetic standpoint, you have experienced a fraction yeah. of what Will and Jada are experiencing with people believing that you should be apart, but choosing to still try together. Mm. What does it feel like? Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, people's thoughts and ideas are irrelevant to any one situation. So like the millions of thoughts and Will and Jada are irrelevant. It's up to what they want to do. It's up to And you. If, whether you support me or don't support me, it really is irrelevant. It has no bearing on my existence. It doesn't impact you literally at all? Not, not, not whatsoever. It's like, you know... It's like someone saying, it's like telling a smoker, you, you know, from a, it's like a, a hobo yelling at you, quit smoking. It's, it's irrelevant. We're not talking about hobos. It has no bearing. I'm not talking about that. But yeah. for me, it's, it goes back to that whole thing of things that I have control over and things that I yeah. don't. So what do I have control over? I have control over what it is in the, that's in my best interest. My best interest and what I want to do is I want to be together with um, tech with support. you, yeah. with um, with your dad. Yeah. I want to be together with him. It's um, if if I wanted to be together with him and he did not want to, well then You'll obviously obviously I would move on because yeah. I'm not in control of that, yeah. right? But because I'm not in control of his actions and his actions say, I want to be in control, I, I, I want to be with you, they just happen to gel. And even though we've both come um, been apart and we've, um, I've moved out and I've moved away, um, he has reached out and still called me. And the most important thing there is that when somebody picks the phone up and calls you, you have the choice to answer that call or not answer it. And I always answered that call. Mm. But I do have a lot of my friends, a lot of my family, a lot of people around me who have heard the, um, the angst and the anger and the frustration and the hurt that I've been through and that we have been through together. And they are all saying the same thing. Please, please, please get away from him so maybe get a divorce it's over move on it's over and i sort of have been there where i'm like in agreement and yet still here i still am i am still sitting here beside him um we are still working it out and we are still going through it at the end of the day i am not in control of what my friends think and or family I have to do what I think is in my best interest. So are we right? staying together because of spite? We are, I never said anything about spite. Oh, yeah. I just finished saying that, you know, it's what I want. Mm -hmm. It happens to be what you want, and it happens to gel at this time. So it's really redundant what everybody else thinks in a nutshell. Well, to close things out on that very beautiful, poignant note, something for me that I'd like to know, um, which over the years you guys don't ask as much, which is not bad. I mean, me and Lauren are getting better at our jobs and more capable, but uh, we're also less involved in your relationship. But I think that's because you're finding more strength in each other and more strength in yourself too. But the question that I've, you know, for a very long time, I think you guys are beautiful together. And dad, I look at mom as the one person that I just get to see you be so incredibly soft with. And you use affection as a joke a lot to bother and to harass and I, I can think of really good reasons as to why that is, but with mom, you get to just do it purely and vulnerably. And I see that. I'm like, man, my, my mom mm. is the one place that my dad gets to be a version of himself that he doesn't get to be with anybody else. And with mom, with dad, mom, you know, you've got somebody who's just completely devoted and have given you the kind of love that you've wanted your whole life. And not just love that is in theory, but like, so actionable and you know everybody who knows dad and is loved by dad can attest to how much he shows up for people and how reliable he is like he's incredibly reliable and I'm, I'm so happy that you have somebody in your life given the life that you've had and the family that you were dealt that you chose a love that you can really really rely on to choose you and to be there for you even when you weren't technically together but over the years and maybe the last four years or so, the reason why I have, I have not been sure if I am 
supporting you guys staying together, which is irrelevant, but I don't know the answer to the question, which I'm just curious if you can placate me and answer. Like, I don't believe, Dad, that we're all fixed people who are never going to change. I think that we are always changing and evolving, and that's the beauty of humans. The mm. iPhone is like a near-perfect product, and yet still it comes out with updates that tops its last self. So I think humans are like that too. So I've just been curious, is the best version of my dad possible in partnership with my mom? And is the best version of my mom possible in partnership with my dad? What's your answer to that question? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's just because of, um, because I have ventured out. And so, um, yeah, that's, I would say yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but what I will, and, and just say this, um, a lot in terms of relationships, um, a lot of us think that we are supposed to get everything in that one person and that's not reality. So there's a lot of things and parts of that possibly your dad um, does not show up for me. And I've been able to look for others and they, um, in terms of um, if it's for travel, I found somebody that I could travel with. If it's to go to the theater, I found somebody else I can go to the theater with. Making love, you we found someone else. We are not talking about another man. Okay. We are talking about girlfriends. Okay. So um, I have a lot of fun with a lot of different friends that I have out there. And so there are just different... I use each one of my friends for just different things. And so that I can be my best version of me and I don't have to compromise on what I want to do just because I'm with a partner who doesn't want to do those things. I will just do them elsewhere. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm That's very, how I'm, I feel. I'm very happy you found people to do those things with you. Exactly. Yeah. I'm sure you are because yeah. I don't want to sit and play video games all day long either. Yeah. So yeah. that's something that you thoroughly enjoy doing. And I've come to the, I, if that brings you joy, then mm. the, then you should do that. Yeah. Right? And I don't want to take that away from you. You would because, like to? No, I don't. Okay. Actually, I did before. Okay. But again, right? Yeah. I Like I said, we have evolved, we yeah. have changed, yes. and we continue to change. Yeah. And um, not to say, or not to put a damper on this, but like I've said before, it's still work in progress. And so that's not to say that you know next week won't be a different story but right now I, we are doing might be a different cracker it, this this week as i continue to work on me because the mm -hmm. only person i'm in control of yeah. um everything is working out just fine yeah. right everything is hunky dory everything is just fine by me and maybe you but know i've made those adjustments and maybe to all myself. your podcasts and all your things that you put out have rubbed off on us and made us better people we are a product of your I'm teaching. I'm going to pretend that's not sarcasm and we can end with that. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. Take care. Bye. Thank you, mom and dad, Olivia and Brian. In full disclosure, while I'm recording this outro, I have yet to do their interview yet, just how timing worked out. But I am going to hope that the conversation was illuminating and it was interesting and that it provided me with more understanding, not just for their journey, but most importantly, for why they are where they are today. Something that I have a blank on right now. And I hope that in turn for you just provided more understanding and empathy for couples like my mom and dad who live between that binary that we talked about. Okay, before I close this episode out, I wanted to just offer um, some reflections on Jada's memoir because at this point I have finished half of it. And in full disclosure, I finished the back half of it. So I started out when she met Will Smith because I knew that's what I'd be talking about. And then I finished it this morning up until that point. So I will go and get the first half of the book um, later just because it's good to, to know somebody's full story because I did learn a lot from even that half of her life and gain much more empathy and perspective. I can say that Jada Pinkett Smith has lived an incredible life and she has had access to learnings and teachings and sights and perspectives that majority of us, myself included, are not privy to. So a lot of the time, her language goes a little over the head. Um, and so as a result, you kind of have to read between the lines sometimes. 
And I don't mean that in a negative way per se, because again, like the way that she describes things is going to be based on her experiences and her experiences are out of this world. So sometimes the way that she talks about things are out of this world. Like they, they're just not grounded. They don't feel grounded. So I had to translate a lot of the stuff through a like get to the point filter. Um, and that may be a, a point, a note for herself that she may feel like she has said something, but because she has described it in language and experiences that are not relatable, it's really hard to sink your teeth into it. But I do feel like I did a decent job of feeling more grounded in her and feeling more um, empathy and understanding for her. And then as a result of that, being able to extract lessons from her life that could apply to mine one day. And also being able to as I have done for my parents, just like regain the love for their love. It's the wrong way of putting it, but I think the problem with couples goals is that we think that a couple can only be aspirational if they fit inside of a certain model versus just any couple that is willing to create and forge their own path and who stays on that path or couples who get off that path because not what's best for them. People in general who are doing what's best for themselves and that best is indicative in their health and their happiness and their ability to love others. Um, people who do that can still be goals. And I think in her book, it's very clear that they have a very loving community and dynamic who relies on them, who respects and appreciates them that they are doing their best to give back to their community and to nourish themselves and to be mindful of each other and mindful enough to know that they don't have a way of describing that quite yet, but they're interested in finding that out and they're interested in that discovery process together. And there is something goals and aspirational about that. So that's what it did provide me with. What I will say as like a note for a takeaway, because I can say a lot of wonderful, lovely things, right? Like and I, I will say that it was very well written. Um, it was a very interesting story. It was very compelling. I loved the way that she talked about her kids. You know, as a mom, that was something for me that I, I took a lot from in that like traditional goals sense. And who knows, down the line, I might have a more nuanced perspective that shifts how I weight that set of goals. But I loved that part of it. But I will say I get why people are having a hard time seeing Jada as accountable and as aware and I don't think it's because she's not accountable or not aware, but I think it's because she places the weight on the excuse versus the ownership a little bit too much. And we've all been in romantic relationships, relationships period, where we've seen people do this. I'll give a very loose example. I step on your foot. And you're like, my gosh, ow, my foot, you just stepped on it. And then I'm like, oh, sorry, I stepped on your foot. But like, why is your foot standing in this doorway right here? Like, I actually walk this way every single day. I'm wearing steel toe boots. You know I'm wearing steel toe boots. So like, why do you have your foot here if you know that I'm walking and I'm carrying stuff? And I'm telling you this whole long story. And in the end, one, your foot's still throbbing. And two, because of all of that extra on top of it, you leave there feeling like you didn't even say sorry. And then I'm like, yeah, I did. The first thing I said to you was sorry. But unfortunately, I then went on to put so much more weight on the excusing part that that gets glossed over. And I just saw that happen a lot um, with her, even in regards to how she speaks about Will. She does speak about him very powerfully and very upliftingly and lovingly. It's just that the weight gets placed on the critique and the blame and accountability on Will's side a little bit heavier. Number one, that's the media's fault because the media thrives on negativity because of the human's negativity bias. So already that message has been over amplified. And so if she's not cognizant and aware of that and doing extra to double down on the positivity when she has the opportunity to speak, the weight can just feel off. Um, so not that those things aren't there, but I just, I could see how you can make an argument that she could lean heavier into ownership and into praise. I mean, especially for her partner, um, especially given the public perception. 
And yeah, it, it does read a little bit like, thank goodness she's not tapped into people's opinion of her on social media and reading it constantly. But also, are you not reading what people are saying about you on social media and saying about your partner? I just think a clear example of that was that small thing about, you know, Tupac, wherein Will posted this loving post of her on her birthday. And then you go to her page and it's a video of her and Tupac, mind you, dancing to a Will Smith song. But yeah, when you do that back and forth, that's a part of the, you know, I talk about this in terms of relationships, the pillars um, that make a healthy relationship. And I added, you know, social awareness as a part of that in consideration that relationships are not just between two people. Like there is a social element to it. There's a social advantage and there can be a social disadvantage if you aren't mindful of each other. And I think that she has to really examine that piece because undeniably the way that she is maneuvering is not helping the social perception of her partner or of their partnership. And you just, you can't deny that fact. And yes, you can have explanations and yes, you can have excuses, but the ownership and accountability part, I mean, I think is, is really what's in need of attention right now. So I will say that in terms of what I learned or what I can reflect on of like, am I, you know, making sure the weight is in the right place in my relationship when it comes to talking about the hard stuff? Um, yeah. And am I willing to lean into just being wrong sometimes? You can, you know, nudge that you're wrong, but are you willing to like, <clears throat> really get in there and be in that wrong place. And that's not easy to do, uh, especially when so many people automatically want to put you there. But sometimes people want to put you there so bad because you don't seem to want to go. <laughs> so that's why we're getting aggressive. Anyways, I thought I would have more to say in this reflective ending piece, but I don't. So I should be able to acknowledge that and just end that and just express deep compassion and gratitude for this, these human beings going through an incredible time, incredible success and incredible attention. This book is a huge success. You can't deny that, <clears throat> but also incredibly challenging and trying. I can't even begin to imagine what it's like. So uh, I'm just like putting out feelers for you and hopefully this piece of content out in the universe, you know, added more perspective and less pain for you. And if it did the opposite, then I hold myself accountable for that, for just getting in on the fever of this, because there is a part of me that is doing that too. So that's the real. And I need to take a drink because my voice is hoarse. Uh, Have a great uh, week. Bye, lovers. Bye, friends. Uh, lovers and friends. Lovers and friends. Uh, I'ma take you on a trip, baby. I don't pretend. I say, lovers and friends. Uh, I'ma hold you down, down to the end. I say, lovers and friends. Uh, lovers and friends. And I say, lovers and friends. I'ma hold you down, down to the end, I said I'ma wax that, I'ma tax that Bring it back so you can mac that, pack that Where you going, press play, podcast streaming Got you going all day, talking about the good, good Girl, you know you look good, sex, dreaming, sex, feeling understood Yeah, you finding out he no good But if you listen, pay attention, you gon' find out how to make a miss it Got a ticket, baby, you just lovers and friends uh, 